Aussie. Eh? One of the first things you got to do is get bait. And, uh, today we're going to go get some crabs. Lola, where's the crabs? Where's the crabs? Seaweed, not crabs. It's seaweed. favorite bait for smooth arms, hardback crabs. But I like to go for the uh, green underbellied ones like this. They'd, they'd normally catch a lot more. Right, time to go fishing. You get something uh, on the Unsolent called the May, May Rot, which is when all the seaweed uh, in abundance, like you can see here. And the problem with this is when the tide starts flowing, this is the kind of stuff that catches on your line, and you'll notice your rod getting tighter and tighter and tighter until eventually you've got a massive clump of this weed stuck on your line. Uh, it makes fishing quite difficult. Um, and as you can see, there is a lot of weed that's gathered here from the previous tide. And it's low tide at the moment. 
when I uh, when I get out there and the tide starts coming in, all this is going to pick up in the water and uh, flow along the bottom and catch my line. So this is not a good sign because it means there's going to be loads of weed out there. However, I should still I should still be able to catch a fish or two. It's just this is going to definitely uh, uh, definitely impede my fishing. I'm really not looking forward to this. I hate this. A uh, couple of weeks, so all of this should be gone, and we shouldn't have to worry about things like um, the weed. But yeah, I just thought I'd show you while I was here. This is the kind of stuff that will catch in your line. It does get quite frustrating. Um, a tip I will say though is when your line does start getting tight, every now and then just pull it up, knock the weed off, and throw it back out again. Um, because when your bait's covered in this kind of weed, fish ain't gonna see it. So it's best to just every now and then just pull your line up, clear the weed, and throw it back in. But yeah, I'm going to pull my kayak now to the water and see if there's a fish out there. It's a nice flat calm day today. No one out there yet. It's 5am, sun coming up. And like I said, the tide's coming in. So I'm going to fish the tide in and fish the tide down. The only thing I'm worried about is this weed. But hopefully it shouldn't uh, shouldn't get my way too much. Right, let's get to the water. Right, that's me all ready. As you can see, the sun's coming up. Perfect. Nice and flat and calm out there as well. Should be good. I was up for a sunrise. One of the best parts about getting up early. It's probably the only best part about getting up early, to be honest. Never want to get out of bed, but when you see something like that in the morning and everyone else is still asleep, it's sometimes it's definitely worth it.
All right, so that's me anchored up now. Still beautiful sunset. That. That's me anchored up, and uh, with smooth on fishing, it's probably one of the best fish to catch on a kayak, as in fighting wise. Uh, your rod will literally bend right over, screaming reels. And on a kayak, there's something about it. It's just because you sat on this little kayak and you're fighting this hard fish. Um, it's a great feeling. What I will say though is, if you're smooth on fishing and there's plenty of fish about, the last thing you're going to want on a kayak is two rods because um, your lines will intertangle. Because um, with the kayak being light, when you catch a smooth on, it's going to move you about and the kayak's going to move all over the place. And if you've got two lines out, your lines are more than likely going to get tangled. Um, and I've lost quite a lot of fish like that. Um, another thing you can get is you can get um, a double take. So you can have two smooth hounds on at the same time. So you can have one line flying off that way, another line going off that way. Um, and you don't want to lose rods and, you know, I suppose if you leash it and that, but uh, it's, it's, I don't know, I tend to find, you know, it's, it's, quite, it's quite tricky to try to pull them both in. Uh, so what I normally do is I just start with one rod. Um, if that's not working, I'll throw two in, uh, and then I just hope for the best. But I tend to find if you you know if you wait long enough, especially off Leon Solent here, you'll definitely um, you definitely get at least one hound in the day, um, especially June July times, a good time of year. Uh, tide's starting to come in now. The water's quite clear. It's not too not too clear, which is a good thing. But um, yeah, so the bait we got earlier, as I showed you, which are collected in the nets. So I got plenty of hardback crabs. I'm going to uh, I'm going to bait one up now. Show you how I do it. Uh, throw that out, and hopefully we can uh, show you a smooth round in a bit. So rig wise. Just got a, a multiplier reel with about 20, 20 pound uh, braid, uh, 20 pound mono on there, and then I've just got an ugly stick uh, GX2. Uh, this is a this is a 20 to 30 pound class ugly stick. You could probably even go to a 12 to 20, um, and you know the smaller the, the smaller and lighter the gear, the more fun the fight, but the more also the more chance you uh, of losing it. Uh, hook wise then. I'm using anything from a 4.0 up to even a 6.0 or an 8.0 if you wanted to. Uh, they've got quite big mouths. Uh, I've got some other rigs with me uh, with circle hooks. I'm going to try them a bit later. But this rig I've got now, it's got a 4.0 on it. And I've just got a running ledger set up. So just off my main line, I've got a, a runner on the line. It's just a swivel. I've got about 50, 50 pound uh, shock leader from there. Uh, that's just so when I'm handling the uh, the fish on the side of the kayak, the line doesn't cut into my hand. Uh, you know, it's a bit thicker, uh, less likely to cut me. And that's only about sort of a shoulder's width length. And then I'm just gonna shove a little sinker on here. And the rig is as simple as that. So that's my main line. Just a little bead stop at hitting it with a swivel. And this is a 4 -0. I normally go a bit bigger, I just don't have any on me. I tend to find the best crabs to use um, hardback wise are these ones. Sort of that look like that underneath. Anything from sort of a 50 pence piece to about you know the top of a coke can um, is is normally a good size. I mean I've thrown out massive hardback crabs out there before and I've still had uh, fish taken. They just smash it a few times before they uh, they take it in. Whereas the smaller ones I tend to find they just swallow them whole and take them in as a oneer. So I've taken the two back legs off. I've just put the hook in the one hole, pushing it through. Now the other hole like so and that is literally as you can see there you still got movement still alive you can still swim and that is how i present my bait and all i do is throw him out now um, 
put my drag on and uh, hope for the best. So, like I, like I mentioned earlier, one of the things I always do when I'm smooth hand fishing is, uh, is put my drag on. So, it's because when these fish take, uh, they, they hit and run, and they're quite powerful, so um, literally don't be surprised if your rod just goes flying off your kayak. So that's why you need to uh, make sure your drag's on. Loosen that a bit more. Hopefully I'll be able to show you a screaming reel in a minute. In the meantime, I'm going to enjoy this uh, sunrise. I'm going to have some breakfast. That's me, Iridian's my first smooth hand. Literally, as you can see, a right run bedners. That's a 20 to 30 pound class ugly stick and it's bending it right over. Um, there you go. Screaming reels. Right, so yeah, hard, really hard fighting fish. I'm gonna try and pull them in now, but it just goes to show hardback crabs work. And these guys are hard fighters, man. Try and get him in the kayak and show him. Oh, I love I love catching smooth arms. Nice size as well. <coughs> okay, so he's only a baby. He's only a baby, but as you can see, he bent my rod right over, gave me a little fight as well. You can imagine what a 20 pounder would be like. I'll pull him in now, hopefully. I'm gonna try to at least. Right, so that's the first smooth under the day. As you can see, they can uh, they can be quite hard to handle on the kayak, especially obviously the bigger they get. Right, let's get the next crab out. They're definitely here.
Hi, finally finished my breakfast. So that's a prime example of what a smooth hand will do. It'll come in, it'll smash the bait like that, and it'll come back and finish it off. As you can see, it's taken a massive chunk out of it. Time to put a new crab on. Right, so that's fish on. <laughs> so as you can see, when you hook in, I've obviously got two lines out now, so if my other line goes now, or this fish swims underneath that line, or even my anchor line, I'm going to have to fight it that way. Him out. I'm into my third smooth arm now. This one's a bit bigger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these things give such a good fight. Getting bigger.
getting a lot bigger. Check him out. How's he? Definitely getting a lot bigger. Lovely smooth arm. Look at the fat head on that. Check him out. Lovely story smooth out. It's the fifth of the day. Lovely, lovely fish. Fought really hard. Such powerful creatures. Common, lovely common. Dig him out. Nice one on here. And for a big run. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> Check him out. Yeah, we'll get that. Check him out. How's he? Check him out. <laughs> nice big starry this time. This one gave one hell of a fight. Not for a smooth arm. Cool, so that's me out of bait now. Um, been an absolute cracking day. I've had seven or eight hounds, uh, all you know, double figures. Great fights. My arms are sore from reeling them in. Um, honestly, one of the one of the best types of fishing in a kayak, smooth arm fishing. Really enjoyed it. Um, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, until next episode.
I'll see you soon. Tight lines.